Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my first thoughts video on Dawn Trail. I'm recording this on launch day after a very long and productive early access weekend. Now, I haven't watched any of the story cutscenes. I focused on getting content out on YouTube on all the combat related stuff. And so, other than the world, the graphics update, and the music, the gameplay, the dungeons, the trials are what I've had the majority of my experience with. And as such, I have a lot of very hopeful thoughts when it comes to Dawn Trail on this front already. Now, I got to do a fair spoiler warning. I am recording this on expansion launch date, which means, you know, not a lot of people have gotten through the story yet. I'm going to be including footage from a ton of different dungeons, including the post MSQ level 100 dungeons. So if you don't want to see that, then, you know, that's your warning now. I am also going to be including footage from the first extreme trial, which I released a video on. It's in the patch notes. It's in the trailer. We've known about it. They previewed it at a live letter. Like, I'm not going to hide that particular bit, but I'm not going to include footage from the second extreme trial or the final boss of the MSQ. So you don't have to worry about any of that. I'm also not going to include footage from one particular dungeon that I don't want to spoil. So the the final MSQ dungeon, basically, that's not going to be in here either. So that's the scope of everything. Since I haven't done the story, you know, I can't spoil anything else other than locations, bosses, whatever. So I'm just giving you a warning of that being in the video. So before I get into everything, it's worth remembering that a lot of people have been asking Yoshi P about job homogenization and encounter design, and he's talked about it quite a bit in various interviews, live letters, etc. One of the big focuses we were told for Dawn Trail would be on encounter design, just because it's easier to leave the jobs kind of similar-ish to their Endwalker state and make more engaging encounters than it is to try to do everything at once. This is also when we were told they would be focusing on more individual job identity as they approach 8.0. So if they're saying encounter design is a focus, we don't really know what that means. But now that we've had a taste of what they mean, again, I'm feeling quite hopeful. Now, obviously, we don't have a whole lot of combat content to judge this on. We don't have a normal or savage tier yet. We have a couple of extremes and a handful of dungeons. I suppose I could look at things like major fate bosses, which actually were incredibly fun, though. I feel like they've done a pretty good job with these in expansions past. So this one definitely has a kind of dawn traily feel, which will make more sense as the video goes on, as well as hunts, which while the A ranks are dying super fast, all of them have been incredibly dangerous thus far, so I'm really curious to see how they're going to look when we're not mowing them down in literally 11 seconds. So they can get even just one or two attacks off what it'll look like. So if I'm not talking about fates or hunts, then the next logical step is to talk about dungeons. Now, it's worth reminding everyone that in Final Fantasy XIV, dungeons are not meant to be a serious piece of content. They're meant for any level of player, both skill and actual level, to hop into something, get a reward out of it, and exit. You know, if you only have an hour to play, they want you to feel like you can do a dungeon or two, maybe with sitting in a queue, and it's not going to be really a stressful time. But even in easier content like dungeons so far in Dawn Trail, you can kind of get a feel for what is in store for the rest of the expansion. Now, the dungeons are still quite standard, but feature far more boss unique visual tells and more animated experiences, both with the dungeons themselves, something they were improving back in Endwalker, and for the very simple mechanics that the bosses actually have. It could just be an AoE like any other, and the way it's presented to the player either requires them to pay a little bit more attention or keep track of something for a little bit longer, and that's just already more involved than Endwalker. I, I can name on less than one hand, not even the full five fingers, on less than one hand, the number of Endwalker bosses that I didn't just go, oh, and that was kind of the end of it, you know? Uh, and some of them, I like, Vanna Spotty has a boss where there's like a really unique visual tell. And I don't even just mean the last one. I mean the one with the mouths on the ground. But even that's something like super simple. It, it just, it's not stuff like that. It's stuff that kind of forces you to really analyze your surroundings a lot. So you're not just looking at the boss and tunnel visioning and maybe moving a step to the left or right because the mechanics are so easy and so scripted. They are, but they require you to actually look around and maybe find some place that's safe instead of just accepting that where you are and you know a slight shift over is going to be enough for the entire fight. And of course, boss hitboxes being smaller, that even impacts the dungeon bosses. You know, after the last several years of Endwalker's boss design, 
I've gotten pretty used to disrespecting bosses, even endgame bosses, and coming up with easy to achieve, you know, never stop hitting the boss movements. Here, it feels like they very much want you to be okay with not attacking the boss the entire time, or working very, very, very hard to actually do that. There's, there's one boss in particular where I just say, no, I'm not even gonna think about being in melee range here. And some of y'all already know, I'll put the boss on the screen right now since I warned you about this one. This boss, every time I go Viper on this boss, I think to myself, oh, you know, it's not gonna be that bad. I'll just slip between and I just make sure I won't get grabbed and I'm gonna have uptime. And every time, I get grabbed, I get masked, or I get killed by something. And it just makes me feel like this is a dungeon. This isn't supposed to happen to me, but it's happening to me. And you know what? I like that. I like that there's something here that's not really challenging so much as it's challenging the way that I've been used to playing for years and years. Will I get used to this and will it still feel easy and the same difficulty as every other dungeon? Absolutely, even as a melee. But the fact that it's even forcing me to kind of respect it a little bit is already such a significant step up without pushing the average player into a place where they feel like they can't do it. And that's really the difficult balance to strike. And this is probably one of the best examples of a way that I feel like they're kind of getting in that direction to achieve it. And one of the things that gets me really optimistic. It's just crazy to think that I came out of the dungeons and most of the time I come out of dungeons, I'm like, oh, you know, that was a pretty good dungeon. You know, I think of the music, I think of the environment. And even then some of the bosses are sometimes kind of fun, but I rarely look at a dungeon and go, man, I really look forward to getting that an expert. I might actually do expert instead of just spamming hunt trains for the entire expansion. Like between, all of the expert dungeons on release, I love all three of them, even if I really prefer Strayboro the most, but that's, that's a big change for me. It's been a really long time since I felt that way about dungeons. Now, I will say this. There's one thing they did in some of the dungeons that it works in some places and doesn't work in others. Uh, dungeons more regularly seem to be featuring sort of mini boss style mobs, you know, big mobs in a pack that are significantly tankier than all of the other ones that are in the same pull. Um, but what they end up feeling like are just really beefy beat sticks. You know, I suppose they want players to maybe consider using buffs more consistently or to at least encourage that type of behavior on the trash pulls themselves. And to be honest, you know, I do. I already do that. You know, I always try to factor in my two minute buffs into one pull and then my one minute buffs into another and then my two minutes when I come to the boss. So it's already kind of a mindset I'm in. But with where they place a lot of these mini bosses, I can't really think that way because sometimes the mini bosses are right before the major boss. And if I sit there trying to just do the bare minimum to hoard resources for the boss, the dungeon takes so much longer. So even those little bits right there are, I guess if you want to think about like a mentality shift, are welcome but they kind of go overboard in a few places as well. The very final trash pull in the level 99 dungeon, for example, just overdoes it. There's an Adamantois who quite literally, I think has more HP than the boss that immediately follows it. And it's not like it's engaging. Like if you're gonna create these mini boss style mobs, you probably want the actual portion of that encounter to be a little bit more interesting. And some of them are, you know, there's the double slapstick AOEs towards the end of Strayboro, and there's a section that's a lot like some of the Ronkin ruins, but it's it never really achieves it all the way. It never really feels like, oh, you know, this mini boss that's taking a while to kill with people being synced down and having item level appropriate gear, or whatever it is, is, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's not engaging enough to warrant it being this long of an experience. Because then I imagine, you know, when I did it with Trust, it took absolutely forever. And then when you do it in Duty Finder, you're always going to get varying levels of skill. And sometimes you may genuinely feel like, oh, this is absolutely going to take forever. The boss took forever. The trash is taking forever. You're dreading those mini boss pulls because they're not like fun engaging. They're just beefy for the sake of trying to get you to actually do some damage or think about your damage rotation a little bit in a dungeon. So I think the intention is good, but I think the execution is still left wanting in a lot of cases. But overall, this is the best dungeon experience I've had on expansion launch. I think the level 99 dungeon has some major problems in it. And I think that the auto scrolling section of the very first dungeon is probably the other lowest point. But other than that, I can't really think of something I don't like. Some of the dungeon bosses also like do a ton of damage, like spread, then stack, then unavoidable raid wide, then multi hit stack, especially the level 95 dungeon, the final boss. I couldn't believe like if you don't have a healer, how much damage that actually does. And healers probably want to be 
be hearing that. So the fact that I have to say that about a dungeon boss, surprising. Trust me, I'm as surprised as you are. Not like he's that difficult, but if something goes wrong and the healer goes down and you can't get them back up, you might not finish that boss if your tank isn't a warrior or even then a warrior that knows how to actually use their skills properly. As for the trials, especially the extremes, these practices are exercised even further here. You know, while uptime I think is easier to achieve once you're comfortable with these fights, something that feels more akin to what we're experienced with Endwalker, at the very least they really focus on boss specific tells, which lead to a less streamlined learning experience than most of the Endwalker trials. They make very frequent use of the new on-screen text layout, and they have more means of identifying boss mechanics and tells at a glance. I really love both of these extreme trials, though the second one has some clear design faults, especially with one particular cheesable mechanic. Now, I don't think any of this stuff is actually harder. You can still learn and eventually execute them at a similar difficulty curve to the rest of the game, but their level of engagement with the various elements, the environment, their actual boss animations, and the player themselves seem to be more pronounced. And this is along the lines of what they said we would be getting. So it's rare that I feel refreshed doing content that isn't of the highest level. I'm used to challenging myself on that capacity. And the only other content that usually feels refreshing is stuff that is outside of the norm, stuff like Eureka, stuff like Bosia, stuff like Criterion, where while the conventions of the game are the same or at least similar enough, they're offering me a new experience kind of from the ground up that I have to adjust to. But these are run-of-the-mill standard pieces of content that are just better designed. And that's it. I, I think outside of those mini bosses, I think the word is better design. So if this, this very start where they deliberately curve things to be easier, less engaging, more new player friendly, if this is what they have in store, then I'm just that much more excited for the next extreme trials. Even the next normal mode trials, like I, they've been getting really good with even normal mode since like 6.2. I mean, even before that a little bit, but like they, they've been doing a much better job even with those. It's hilarious getting certain things in the trial at some of the times. But like, I can't wait to see the normal mode raids, which already really have this kind of refreshing, even, even just the environments for those are really exciting. Like I'm really looking forward to the Arcadian Black Kato ever since we saw it in the live letter. Uh, and then Savage, like, I, I wanna revisit this topic because if it starts this strong and then falters, then all the excitement's gonna go away. And that's gonna be very much determined on the normal, on the Savage. Heck, even the treasure dungeon that we're getting at 0.05, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on because I want to see this trend continue to prove that they really mean it, that they really want to take away some of the fight and job homogenization, because if they can make the fights feel more refreshing, that makes me feel better about them approaching the jobs and giving them some of their identities back, giving us less of the every job can kind of do the same thing, every job kind of achieves the same goal in the same ways, but just looks different ways. I don't want that to be such a widespread sentiment. I want us all to feel like the reason we play our job is very unique to the reason why we play our job and not just, I like to swing two swords around really fast for Viper or you know I like to punch for Monk and that's kind of the end of it. I'm actually still okay with that. I've been okay with it for years, but with a little bit of a taste of something different, now my brain is curious. Now I wanna see where all this goes. And while we won't see the job stuff anytime soon, I'm looking forward to seeing the fight stuff. And to have such a positive, uh, just a positive impression of the encounters and the fight design and everything, that's, I'm glad. I'm glad. Because on top of already being a, a really, an overall smooth launch, not a perfectly smooth launch. Xbox players have been having a bad time. But uh, it, it, on top of being a smooth launch, to have this excitement, I didn't expect it. I was expecting run of the mill. I'm going to have fun. That's it. Now I'm excited. So let's see where that feeling goes. And that is going to be a wrap for my thoughts on Dawn Trail's encounter design so far. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. we got some job thoughts coming. We've got State of the Realms, uh, and then I'm also going to be uploading my main scenario playthrough onto the main channel, so keep an eye out for that as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.